What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're going to be going over changing your mesh, or at least the materials to appear as though you're changing your actual mesh in the middle of a game. The reason we're going to be doing this is we can apply basically damaged animations once we've taken enough damage and, you know, actually make the, the character appear bloody or damaged or broken, whatever. And we can also actually use this to kind of perform some effects when they've taken so much damage, or whenever we want to do it, really. We're not going to be getting into that part today, but we will have a separate episode on that. For now, we're just going to go over some simple stuff, basically to describe how we can get our characters to change their materials and essentially change their mesh once we've taken damage. You can see I'm going to beat this guy up a bit, and I've got launch on this attack, so I really should be using a, a better attack here, but I'm not, because, you know... Why would we, right? So, now that he's taken half of his health, he becomes this weird crystallized creature. Now, don't worry, you're probably going to have a better model, a better material to use than I did. I made a crazy looking material because I didn't have a bloodied mutant character at all. So, that is his damaged state. But, the important thing to note here is that it doesn't matter what he looks like. You can easily as someone who makes materials or works on models, make something that makes him look like a bloodied version of himself and apply it here. The important part, again, is just that this guy, for me, is that bloodied version. Okay. Now, what we need to do to make this happen is actually quite simple once you know where to look. It's just, it's kind of hidden in Unreal doesn't make it the easiest to, to figure out how to do that. It's not like just changing a sprite or something in a lot of other engines, like Game Maker. You need to actually kind of do some, some work to set the mesh using the material slots. If we go to the code section, as usual, we're going to uh, perform some logic to enter our damage state once we take a certain amount of damage. You could do this at any point, you don't have to do it here. For me, I decided to, in my take damage function, we're going to perform the logic, we're going to call a implementable event, a blueprint implementable event, which means we're not going to fill out any of the logic for it in code, but we're defining it here so we can call it in the code. And once we call it, it will fire on the blueprint side. So in our fighter template character class, our .h, we do a u function, blueprint implementable event, and void change to damaged materials. Now, you can call it whatever you want. Uh, I just want to be explicit with the actual name. So once you've made change to damaged materials, you don't actually have to do anything else. You're good to go. What you need to do now is figure out when we're going to call that function. In take damage, right here. We're going to perform logic to check if we're below half health. I, I believe I check if we're at 50% health or lower. You can see this is after we've done all the pushback and everything. We check if our player health is less than zero, then player health equals zero. Else, if player health is greater than zero and player health is less than 0 0.5, meaning, remember, uh, the health is on a ratio of 0 to 1 for the progress bar. So 0 0.5 is actually 50 so 50% of their health. So if they're less than 50% but greater than zero, then we changed to damaged materials. And you can have a separate function like revert to regular materials or something like that so that when the round ends, if you don't want them to stay damaged, you can convert them back then. Once you've done that, make sure you do your standard build solution. Go into Unreal, compile, and you're good to go. Okay, so after you've compiled, go into where you want your materials to be. Or if you already have one, that's fine. I'm going to show you how I made one. I have a mutant folder, which has a textures materials folder, which was automatically generated with the... Well, not automatically generated, but automatically pulled down from when we did the Mixamo stuff. And what I did was I took the mutant material right here, and it'll show you how it's made. This is how they made it. They used a texture sample. And then they applied the UVs, well, not the UVs, they applied the texture sample of the mesh and then the texture sample of the normals. 
Now, what I did instead uh, was I duplicated this, so right click duplicate, and I called it M damage mutant. Now, they did mutant underscore M. I'm used to doing M first, but it doesn't really matter. Just make sure you know this is a material. And what I did was something crazy, and I kept what they had where I had the texture sample of the actual texture, and then we had the texture sample of the normals. Um, I Instead of just doing what the mutant did, having the RGB go to the, to the normal and the RGB go to the base color, I did those two things, but I also brought the RGB into the emissive color, and he becomes this crazy looking guy. You can play around with it. Uh, you can just make it more red if you want. Like, there's a lot you can actually do here um, to make it look kind of however you want. And you can use this for more than just damage. But this is how I ended up doing it, just so that it would be a very clear distinction. Yes, we have changed a lot at this point. This is changing the materials on the mesh. Now we need to access the function we just made in code. If we go to our blueprints, go to our character BPs and our mutant character BP, we're gonna perform very simple functionality here. We're gonna right click. We're gonna look for the event that we just made, the blueprint implementable event. So it is event, you can type in event, but you don't actually have to, change to damage materials. And it's this guy right here. I've already made it, so it'll just link you to this. But when you're making it, it'll spawn this node. And we need to set the material. Now, there's a lot of set materials when you actually look for a set material. The one we want is mesh. And the target is a primitive component. So you want these two nodes that'll come up when you set the material. I'm gonna delete this because I got it right here. But we are going to use our mesh as the target. And we're gonna set our material right here. Now, if you have multiple materials, which is very possible, then of course you're gonna have to set this accordingly. Now, when you click on your little drop down, search for the material we made earlier. For me, it is M damage mutant, this guy right here. And now you'll see when we go into the game and come over here, I can hit our guy. Like I said, all these have launch, so I need to, I need to refine the launch a bit. Uh, I will do that for next episode. That way he's not always getting launched in the air. But once he hits half health or a little bit less, like in this case, he actually goes to the damage mutant material. And the good thing about this is the way we set it up, since two players are essentially the same here, they're just being controlled by different aspects on our keyboard, we can do the same thing here and beat our first player into submission. And you will see he also becomes the damage mutant. You can see at this point it's not uh, player specific. It works for both characters, which is good. The other good part here is that if you have separate characters, you can use the exact same logic in your character blueprint without having to change anything in the code class and because that is our parent code class. We didn't change anything in the mutant code class. So you can just uh, change the material you're using in your other classes that have bloodied materials and such. Uh, if you want to actually change the mesh, there is a way to go about changing the skeletal mesh. It's a lot more complicated than this. We can get into it in a different episode. So anybody, we got a few requests for this, so anybody who was asking, please let me know if you have a specific case where you need to actually change the mesh. It's not nothing we can't handle, but it's more complicated than this. This is a much easier solution. And this is also something that is useful for a lot of different things. We're gonna use this actually down the road anyway, so that's why I figured we could do a video on it now. But there you go, guys. That's how you can change materials when you get to a certain damage amount or whatever you wanna do with it. Uh, if this video helps you, please subscribe. It does more for the channel than anything else you can do and it lets me know I'm doing a good job and solving your guys' questions. If you had any issues with the tutorial or you need any help with any of my other tutorials, feel free to join the Discord. We've got a lot of really helpful members and just a really great community to help you out with whatever issues you had and I can help you out with pictures and videos, so we'll get your problem solved. And lastly, guys, if you want to come join us on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash seanthebro27, or at the YouTube channel, seanthebro27, then we play Dark Souls on Wednesday, Souls Wednesday, 
and we play Resident Evil games on Friday. Currently, at the time of recording this, we've been going over... We just finished Dark Souls 1 Remastered, and we're going over Dark Souls 2, and we're playing through Resident Evil 4 right now. So, it's been a lot of fun. Great meeting a lot of you in a lot closer of a light than just over YouTube comments. Uh, anyway, guys, I'm Sean the Bro. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.